Hey! Yo, what's going up, guys? It's your boy, Abit. Oh, you can just call me Josh from now on because this isn't gonna be a gameplay channel. This isn't gonna be a channel where you come and watch me be goofy. But we are gonna be kind of acting goofy like probably 99% of the time. I'm trying to do this more like a, a game informer type thing, not specifically like game informer. Well, yeah, it's, it's like Game Informer. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to bring you guys the top 10 news that happened during the week uh, within video games and the industry. Let's just let's just drop the chit chat. Uh, let's just get right into it. And you know what? I'll give you guys more news and info at the end of the video if you decide to stick around. So you know what? Boom! Let's just keep going. So coming in at number one, Game Studio Hello Games, who is uh, developing one of the hottest games to release this summer of 2016, uh, No Man's Sky. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of it. Um, that game was actually officially announced that it was going to be delayed to some time in August. And that is uh, fairly unfortunate, seeing as this game is boasting, you know, infinite universes. Computers can't do infinite universes. You know, it's like eight, 8 billion or something like that. Anyways, it's pretty close to infinite universes, which lets the players pretty much explore, find, and discover in a total plethora uh, of things to do. Now, I know what you're thinking. Do I even know what plethora means? Would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? A what? A plethora. Of course I know what plethora means. If anyone who's ever seen Three Amigos with Chevy Chase, Martin Short, and Steve Martin, everyone knows what plethora means. After that announcement was made public uh, just as I expected. The online community was very mature, uh, which brought on a very understanding response from a few choice fans. Death threats. That That's right. De death threats. Hey, you're pushing my game back? you tell me I can't? Why am I playing with scissors? I should probably put those away. They actually sent death threats. Can we just erase these people from the face of the earth? Like somehow... I don't know, make a machine that evaporates them into water and then turns that water into rain and the rain falls on the ground and then the ground gets soaked up growing grass and trees so that way they actually become useful. The Hello Games founder, Sean Murray, as well as the reporter from Kotaku, 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 Kotaka, one of the big video game and former websites, uh, their reporter, Jason Schreier, uh, who broke the news, they both received multiple death threats and hate responses all because the video game got pushed back. Now, why did the video game get pushed back? I mean, E3's right around the corner. Maybe they had some footage that they wanted to do there. Maybe, um, maybe they just wanted to implement better development into the game. Point is, what like it, it, uh, humanity is just scaring me. People need to chill, okay? Just because the game got pushed from development and you're not gonna be able to play it, you know, right away or sooner than expected, it doesn't mean you gotta go <laughs> threaten somebody's life. Let's take a look and, and let, let's pull it up here. Uh, Jason Schreier or Schreer, however, however you, Jason, I don't hate me. I'm very, very sorry. He even took off to Twitter and put in what it's like to write about video games on the internet. And he posted a screenshot of the response from one of the people uh, named at Beach Clashers MDR. So you guys wanna go and actually like send that person some hate mail? I don't know. You, is that? I, I, I would think that's better than a death threat. Point is, this it, it's ridiculous. It, it's utterly ridiculous. I, I feel totally bad for these guys and the fact that this is happening. Let's just give No Man's Sky our utmost support and just and just see what happens and let's let's go from there because this is utterly ridiculous. Coming in at number two, I'm sure some of you guys have heard of Surgeon Simulator. It's a place for those who, who never went to med school or possibly failed med school. And now they have the chance to, to prove that they have what, what, it, what it takes. But hey, if you haven't played it, you should give it a try. And what better time to get it than now? What with the Anniversary Edition, which has updated graphics, environments, and additional achievements, etc., etc. But that is not the best part. This version has Donald Trump implemented into it. Donald Trump has been updated as a new patient, essentially letting users either give him a, a heart of gold or a heart of stone. Now, if you actually go to their website, link will be in the description, by the way. If you go to their website, there's a live feed to show how many people have given him, successfully given him a heart of stone or a heart of gold. And spoiler alert, stone is winning. Definitely go pick up Surgeon Simulator. It's very, very popular. It's one of those kind of laws against gravity type video games which have become very popular. Uh, I know Markiplier has been covering them. And if you look at Rooster Teeth, they've done tons of coverage. And I mean, 
They've, pr they've probably spent more hours on that game than, than humanly thought possible. The one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is how long can this go on until Donald Trump decides to sue the game developers? Point is, Donald Trump seems like one of those people where he can't laugh at himself or, or laugh at the fact that people like cutting into him in a video game. No for that. Thinking <laughs> on number three, uh, I had to talk about Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League is probably one of the most successful indie games that has hit next gen NPC in the past year. It was only released about 11 months ago, and they have seen tremendous growth. And when I say that, I mean literally tremendous growth. In a recent interview with Forbes, the team at Cyanix. Cy Cy Psyonix? Oh my goodness, man. I'm really butchering people's names today. They actually announced that they uh, were able to sell 5 million copies uh, as well as 5 million DLC. That's amazing because they actually gave away uh, a ton of free copies on PlayStation 4 when they first launched. For PlayStation Plus users, they were able to pick up the game for free. So the fact that they've sold 5 million copies plus 5 million DLC, and that's not including those free giveaways, everyone has bought at least one, one DLC package. Point is, it's super fun. Who would have thought that cars playing soccer would be successful? Uh, I, I didn't... I, I, I didn't think it was it was possible, but these guys have proved me wrong. Uh, the company has uh, made roughly about $110 million on a $2 million production budget. That is mind-blowing. That is uh, amazing. Coming in at number four, Minecraft is selling 53 million copies a day. What? As reported uh, by some local sources, again, links in the description. Minecraft is selling 53 million copies a day, which is phenomenal. I know that it's just virtual Legos, but that game is extremely addicting. If I were to go back and actually look at the time spent on Minecraft, I've spent so much time uh, burning townsfolk, killing chickens, drowning pigs, pushing people off of cliffs pushing people off into lava. I've separated animals that have married away from their children and taken their children away to be slaughtered. I even actually once built a thing that shot fireworks. And when it shot fireworks, I had another thing that would shoot cows and the cows would get shot into the fireworks. No, nothing happened, or at least not, not, not the thing I wanted to. Kudos out to them. I, obviously they're, they're doing something right. 53 million copies a day, that's, that's crazy. Oh, did I say 53 million that whole time? I apologize. I meant to say 53,000. Man, think about that. 53,000 copies a day. That's like, it's a lot of money. That's, that's enough said. It's just a lot of money. They're doing really, really well for themselves. All right, guys, coming in at number five, I could not make a video without talking about Call of Duty. I am a semi-pro, or not semi-pro, but I'm a semi-semi-pro <laughs> player. Anyways, I've done tons of online tournaments. I've actually gone to physical tournaments with an open bracket, finishing within top 30, stuff like that. So I, I had to talk about Call of Duty. And, it, and no, we're not going to be talking about Battlefield 1, or we're not going to be talking about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and how it's the most disliked video next to Justin Bieber. No, no, what we're going to be talking about is that the fact that the giant DLC is now coming onto next-gen platforms. Uh, I think it might even be coming to PS3, but uh, a recent article up on Charlie Intel with an announcement from Activision showing that the giant DLC, which previously was only attainable if you got either the Season Pass or if you got, excuse me, one of the Special Editions. Now, why is this newsworthy? It's causing a little bit of a debate. I mean, no surprise there. Call of Duty has kind of been the, the gong show, the video game community lately. It's not really a game that you take seriously anymore, but there's still tons of players, guys, so we got to talk about it. There's a little bit of an upcry of the fact that, oh, I have to pay for the giant now, but I already bought the season pass. Like, what the heck? Why didn't you guys, you know, blah, 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 blah. Listen, point is Activision's a business, and this is what they're doing. Their cycle was to try to uh, force season pass sales. They were trying to get those special editions out. They were trying to do a lot of crazy things. Again, they're a business, guys. They, you know, as, as much as it pains me to say this, they're a business. They're out there to make money. So it's actually smart business and marketing on their side if they said, hey, let's offer this as an incentive. Let's push some sales on our season pass. Let's push some sales on our special editions. And here they are actually, um, you know, now saying we can make more money off of this. Now, I wouldn't be complaining. I love the giant. I love Duris. It's probably one of my favorite zombie maps of all time and i'm actually looking forward to them actually releasing this publicly for anyone to buy because that just means more players when i go into zombies i go in there to play with people generally my age i don't go in there to play with squeakers so hey you know what if they're going to be doing this to sell more uh, copies of something that's already made and make money awesome i'm totally fine with that because it just means i get to play with more people so i wouldn't worry too much about it 
Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this week. Those were the top five things that I found interesting. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let's try to get at least, ah, let's go for two likes on this video. And also, guys, if you want to drop a subscribe button down there so that way you never miss an update, I'm going to be trying to do two up two uploads a week for you guys. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Drop a subscribe down there. I'm out. Woo!